Buzzwords HQ. Today we have got serial entrepreneur with us, Catherine Jones. Catherine owns Social Nation, a massive social marketing company that looks after many, many celebrities and influencers. And then she dreams of Think Wine. Today she's going to talk about Think Wine and just girls, look at this already. And it's your mind. It's absolutely gorgeous. Anyone who's tasted it, I mean, Kath kindly gave us some bottles um, for the office and for our guests, and everyone has absolutely loved it. But we'll get onto that later. So, Kath, welcome to Sisterhood HQ, Dolly. Hi, thank you for I'm having so me. I'm so excited to have you in. Thank you, me too. I love it. It's gorge. Oh, that's fab, isn't it? Mm, it's yeah. our little haven, our own little space. Yeah. So, how did Catherine start in business? Oh, many moons ago now. Um, I actually did a degree in international business management, so I've known for many years that I wanted to run a business. How? What made you pick that? International? That's out. Um, I love travelling. Okay. So actually, like going way back, in school I studied business and I loved it, and I was really interested, but I was really interested in travelling the world, seeing the world. So I, when I went on to uni, I went to uni in Leeds, okay. and I decided that I would study international business management. Because um, I wanted to learn about business in other countries. I didn't really want to just stay in the UK. How interesting. So I ended up in my degree getting a job in America, in Louisville, wow. Kentucky. <laughs> wow. Weird. I know, a bit random because I said to them, you know, everyone wanted to go to LA and New York and all that. Yeah. And I was like, just put me somewhere random. So they put me in Louisville, Kentucky, um, wow. which is where Muhammad Ali is from. So oh. my claim to fame is actually that I met Muhammad Ali. Oh, it's right, Tom. <laughs> it's a claim to fame. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah. So, and what was he like? Do you know what? I, by that point, he was like gone. Uh, um, he was like punch drunk. Yeah, he wasn't was it? shaking. And uh, I think, yeah, I think he had Parkinson's, and like I, he's he? definitely been hit many times. So uh, he was he was not quite there, but he was absolutely lovely. And he used to come into our, the. I worked in a hotel, and he used to come into our hotel restaurant all the time. So I would always see him, and I'd like be like, oh my god, because my mum and dad like loved him and that. So yeah, that, that was my claim to fame really? anyway, but I, st I did a year there, working there, and then when I came back, I finished my degree, and after I finished my degree, I went and moved to China for a year and wow. a half, because I wanted to learn about business in other countries, and I wanted to just get a load of experience, because I knew that one day I wanted my own business, yeah. but I also knew I wasn't ready yet, so I wanted to get a bit of experience. So I moved to China, did a year and a half there, working in a marketing company. When I came home... I ended up getting a job at a um, an influencer agency. But okay, where was that based? That was Liverpool based. Okay. So the guy who ran it, um, he'd been living in London for a while and he'd made a load of money as a paparazzi and he, he because no one was managing like reality TV stars because they weren't really classed as talent okay. as such. Mm. So it was like there was talent managers, people who would manage people who were singers or actors. But there was no one for reality TV because technically it wasn't a talent. So we kind of seen a gap in the market and was like, do you know what? There's all these reality TV shows. It was as Geordie Shaw was starting, Towie was starting. And he's like, I could manage all these. And he knew them anyway because he was a paparazzi. So he worked with them. So he decided to set up his own agency. So by the time I joined him, there was only me and one other person. So we were a proper little small team. And we ended up growing the business. Um, we did really well. And then... We went our separate ways, and I get I got into social media, and I ended up. Um, How did you just fall up. into that from the influencer job? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is so, that was that focus on yeah, social yeah, media? Yeah. yeah. So with the influencer job, we were managing that we, but we were doing everything for them. So like booking the trains, booking the flights, booking the hotels, doing like basically they'd phone you at 1am going oh get me a taxi and you'd do it yeah so they used to phone me like at one o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the morning and be like oh i need a taxi or oh my weaves fell out you know and <laughs> any and literally it would be anything so i knew that i didn't really want to stay as like an all-round agent but at the time like social media was really picking up in in regards to like brands working with influencers so it started kind of with like twitter yeah and People like brands that were on Twitter, like let's just say Coca Cola, for example, would message people off Towie and be like, Can I gift you some Coke? And you post about it on Twitter. And then they were going, Yeah, go on. So they'd accept this, all this Coke at their door, drink it, take a photo, put it on Twitter, and then there'd be a load of Coke sales. Oh, okay. So it kind of started with Twitter and then like it evolved, it went into Instagram. 
um, Facebook, obviously, like Facebook ads are huge now. So it was as the, uh, we were starting to like monetize social media, I was kind of leaving my old company. So I decided that I was going to set up my own agency, but it was only going to be to manage social media. It wasn't going to be an all-round agency. Yeah. Because you've had enough of that. Yeah, I'd had enough of that. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it, it's a lot, and you've got to do the the press and stuff. So you've got to you constantly phone and trying to get them featured in like magazines and OK, and then you're trying to get them uh, on TV and stuff like that. So it, it's a lot of work. While as the social media side, did you find it rewarding? Yeah, of course. Like when you see them get on another TV show or they get into OK magazine, and you're just like, yeah, I did that. Ah, like, you, does it you become like your up. child? Like, oh, yeah, yes. oh god, yeah, yeah. And you you proper love them, and because you love them, even though some of them can be cows and they can, but because you love them so much, like when you read the trolls' messages, like you, it really hurts you. And I'd say only now, like I'm ten years in now to all this, and it's only now that I'm really thick skinned. Because I could read a comment about one of my clients and I'd be like, she's not like that. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. She never said that. And I'd be fuming. I'd be like, eh, how can you say speak so badly about someone you don't even know? And I could never get my head around it because in my life, I would, wouldn't dream of commenting on someone if it was negative. Same. Unless it's to say, like, how you look fit. Yeah. I'm not commenting. If I don't like someone, why does anyone need to know? It can stay in my head. I and I can't understand, understand yeah. So it would make me fume for years, but obviously as I've grown with it and whatever, now it's like water off a duck's back. You know, they say things about them, say things about me. Couldn't care less. But I, it has, it's took a while to get to that Very point. sus. We'll yeah. touch on that a little bit later on. So yeah. tell me how you started the company then. Yeah, so... Um, Did you know it was just going to be flu- influencers? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because that was, that was the industry I was used to. Mm-hmm. All the brands that I had... Because I kind of debated, will I go and get a job? Because a lot of the brands that I've been working with kept offering me jobs. Oh. So like I was working with, you might know them, like, um, oh, actually, I don't know if she's still going, so I won't name her. But it, there's quite a few cosmetic brands that you probably know that had offered me jobs wow. at, that pe- at that point. And I was really considering it. And then I was like, you know what? No, I think I'm ready to work with myself because I, was, I think I was 26 at that point. Wow. 32 now. So at that point, I was 26, I think, and I thought, you know what, I'm actually ready to just work for myself, I think. But I was a bit scared still. So I'm like, OK, I'll just So you've done all of this by 26. You'd lived in America, you'd <laughs> in China. Like an hell, girl. Yeah, well, I, do you know what, though? I feel like I lived, I did, I lived a great life when I was younger, but now I feel like I don't live a life. Because That's the truth. Because I'm just constantly all... I never leave Liverpool anymore because I'm working. I'm constantly working. I'm constantly on my phone. There's so many dependents now. Like, obviously, at that time, even when I first started my company, it was just me. So it was, like, self-employed individual. I could cope. But now when you've got, like, six staff and you've got to make sure you pay them and you're paying your office and all that, I can't go on holiday and, like, switch my phone off. No way. If I go on holiday, I'm on my phone constantly. While as back then, like, it's like I, I did everything. You had freedom. And I had freedom and I yeah. loved it. And it was great. But now I, I wish I had more of that. Yeah, you do. You know, you're you haven't got it. It's like, oh, God. And then if you went back there, you'd be like, I want my business yeah, back. Yeah, exactly that, yeah. If I went back to that, I would... Because I remember at that time, when I was travelling and all that, and I was seeing all these business people and entrepreneurs starting businesses, and I was like, oh, I wish I was them. I wish I could do that. I wish I could have my own business. And I was just like, oh, no, I don't even know what I'd do. Yeah. I've got no idea for a business, because I didn't have an idea. It just felt like it fell out of the skill set that I learned over the years. Yeah, you just so, fell into it. I just fell into it and that was that. So, so how many clients did you knew. have to start with? So when I first started, I it it was two. It was just two, yeah. And um, they'd come with me from the other agency, actually. And uh, it was, obviously, you can imagine, it was a bit of a rocky um, point. But they, want, they wanted to come with me and they were adamant and they ended up coming with me. And that, that's how I set up. It was just two of them. But it was great because it was overnight money. Wow. Because I had clients straight away and I had brands straight away. Because so you already I, had all the connections. I had all the connections. I've been doing it for years. So it was just like, I, I slot straight into it. The, but obviously there's difficulties in that, like, yeah. you know, set yourself up on company's house, get yourself that registered, get yourself a business. All these things you don't really think of. You're just like, yeah, I'll work on... I'll How did you find on you your way navigating around then? Um, I asked loads of questions. Like, okay. I'm not a... I'm not afraid to ask questions. If I don't know something, I ask. I'm like, but how would you do that? But, how, but then what? Who's going to help? 
So I was just asking loads of questions and like I'd phone accountants and ask questions and I ended up getting an accountant and he was really good. He like navigated the way through it. But it was, just, yeah, it was just two clients to start with, but it was money overnight and everything seemed, I guess, really easy at that point because I'm like, but it's oh. It's not easy because you've put all the spades away, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've done you, all of that stuff, so you to get to that point, I think you think you should, you've, you've done it all, so yeah. you've yeah. deserved every, every oh, bit of that one. Thank you. I love that. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> thank you, yeah. No, it, you are right, you are. But I think now uh, going on to a product business when it's so much more difficult, it's like I've really noticed. I thought, God, I can't, I can't believe how good I had it, you know, because you had everything there ready to go, and you just set up and you make money straight away. And there's all you need is a phone. How quickly and a did it, how quickly did it grow? Social Nation. Yeah. Pretty quickly. Um, I got within two months. I got my first member of staff who was my sister. Wow. Yeah, and it was very much a case of I just really wanted someone I could trust. Yeah. And, That's the main um, thing, isn't it? Yeah, Kat? trust is everything. It really, it it is with with staff with anything. Yeah, it's everything. So, I, I wanted someone I could trust. So I got my sister because she was working in just like hospitality, but I knew she wanted more. I knew she could do more. But she hadn't been to uni or anything, so she wasn't necessarily like driven like the way the way I was always wanting business. Yeah, she was just like, oh, I'll just get a job. I'll work. She was always a hard worker. Yeah, proper grafter. But never like had a vision for like I'm gonna have a business or she I'm didn't have that entrepreneurial. Do she day. didn't no, she didn't. Um, but she she knew like she would work hard and she was like I said to her I said what do you reckon like and she was like oh, would I be able to learn that because they'd seen me for years doing it and they knew it was hard because of the amount of times you're on your phone you never get a day off blah blah blah. So she was like oh would I be able to like is it too hard is it so hard I said it's only hard till you know it. And you know, the same as anything, yeah. as soon as you learn it and you know it, it's easy. Yeah. I said, so those first few months, yeah, it might be hard. I said, but I'll stick with you, we'll train you and it will be... You were empowering it as well, yeah, aren't you? Yeah. Well, I, I wanted... And elevating it. Yeah, I wanted more for her. Oh. Um, I did. And she, do you know what? She's still with me now. Wow. Best member of staff ever. Oh. But she, I, I will, I'll be honest, she took a year of a hard slog to oh. get her here. Cause I was like... I used to, we, we struggled at first being sisters because I'd go mad at her because I'd tell her something and I'd have to tell her again and tell her again and tell her again. And she was just like, I'm a slower learner than you, but, and I was just It's like, hard when it's family as well, isn't it? Yeah. And I'd, I'd get really annoyed and she'd be like, you're always getting annoyed at me. So we'd struggle at first, but then we kind of, once she realised, okay, I just have to accept that you're my boss. Yeah. And once I realised like, okay, she is just a bit slower of a learner. Yeah. We adjusted to each other. And I spent more time in training her, going through things slowly and telling her more times than once without flipping. Yeah. That type of thing. And she started going... She adjusted oh, and you adjusted yeah. and, and we fitted did. together. We met in the middle. Yeah. And we fitted together. So after about a year, we were a great team. And then ever since, we've been a great team. What was she doing for you? She was just exactly my job. So like look, looking oh, okay. after the social, like the brands and the clients. Okay. And putting them together. So we basically so you made just, a mini me. Yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly, and that's what I was looking yes. for. Yes. Now I'm like, can I have more? <laughs> yes, more. To be honest. Get back in the factory. <laughs> <laughs> all the girls yeah. in the office are like mini-me's, to be honest. Wow. They're all like great that we've got now. But yeah, so now we've got, we've just grown over the years. We've got more and more clients on board, you know, more and more people started hearing about us. And our clients grew with us and got bigger. Wow. Some of them were like literally on 100,000 followers and now we've still got them. They're on 2 million. Wow. So they've, we've grown with them. They've grown with us. And like, we've really got like solid relationships with some of our clients. Some are new, like some we just got off last year's Love Island. Yeah. Um, but some we've had for Because years. you're established and you've got a name to the, mm -hmm. when you approach people, do they want to come to you because you've got a proven track record? Yeah. Yeah. It, it does depend because it, it, it's hard because you've got, imagine you've come out of Love Island, you've got 10 agents all in your face going like, get me, pick me, speak to me, no, no, no. So sometimes it's just pot luck because there's different ways of like approaching them. Um, and some people like really go like to the family and everything, you know, like, wow. hello, mom, like when your daughter's out of Love Island, can no. I say, no, I've never done that actually, but people do it. So sometimes they've already gotten in before they're even out, yeah. if you know what I mean. 
but they're edging the bets all around. Yeah, they are. Yeah, and it, it, you're all fighting for the ones that you want because yeah. usually you've got a favourite. Like I want that. Yeah, and you wouldn't normally take on a few because that's kind of like competition. Yeah, because you're all going for the work at yeah. once. So um, yeah, yeah, they do. Once if you get their attention, so if you message them and they reply and they come and meet you, once we kind of show them what we do, how we do it, and what clients we've got and how we've developed them, they're always like, yeah, okay, we'll oh, come with you. Really? But then it's just if you can manage to get them to meet you. Because if you can't, if another 10 agents have already seen them, you probably won't even get a chance to have a conversation, so you, you lose them. Do brands actually pick who they want to work with? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Very much so. They just will come to you and say, like, oh, hey, Kath, like, this year I really want to. Oh, so okay. then, of course, I will do everything I can to, to get them. Yeah. But then it doesn't always work out like that, but you might end up with another one. But then even if like a certain brand doesn't want them, you're there to sell them. So I would just reach out, I would just speak to my, like the clients and say, what brands do you want to work with? And then they'll give me a list and then I'll go reaching out to them brands saying, look, we manage this person, they'd really love to work with you on social media, they'd love to do this and that for you. And then they can either say yeah or no. How do you feel like your degree mm -hmm. has worked with your career uh -huh. now? Not one bit. No? No, no. And I'm sure you hear it time and time again. I don't remember a single thing I ever did in uni. I swear <laughs> what to God. Do you no, did? no, and I, I'm glad that I did it yeah. because what it gave me was like a structure. So like, it's I wouldn't have gone to America without that because the course had a year out. Yeah. So like, it gave me that structure to go and work somewhere for a year, and they placed me. The uni placed me. How would I have ever have got that job? I just wouldn't have. But they placed me there, and. So everything that's like happened since, at the end of my degree, I ended up winning an award called the Rising Star Award. Wow. And because I won that award, that's how I got my Chinese internship. Oh, because the company were looking for, the, they were looking at the ones who'd won awards, basically. Because they, they, they were saying, well, you must be outstanding in something. But I was never the cleverest. Like, I had three best mates at uni and every one of them got a first. I got a 2-1. But I partied more than all of them. I was out all the time, but I worked harder than them all. Yeah. They were working maybe a couple of hours on a Saturday. I was working every day because I was like, right, what's so what Imagine if you used to give it your own. job. But yeah, no, was, I should have. I, I should have. <laughs> What but I never did. Do, don't. <laughs> do you know what I mean? If you lived on that and you should have, would have, could have. It's like, well, yeah. we are where we are and we've done it. You yeah. still made it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Do you feel like anything that you learned while you were over in China or America, you've put into your business oh, absolutely, now? absolutely, yeah. yeah so yeah. would you say practical by being yeah. out there? Yeah, better, yeah, yeah. You learn yeah. better than the theory. All day, yeah, all day. What have you put in your business that you learned in like China? Because their <laughs> management systems and the leadership and everything is just, I am astonished by it. Yeah, the, the crazy. I'd say more so than China, it's America that I've really like modelled us on. Okay. Because their like customer service is just phenomenal. Yeah. And I was working for the Marriott Hotel, so I worked for the Marriott USA and I've worked for Marriott UK. Okay. And there is no comparison. The Marriott USA is phenomenal and the Marriott UK is poo. Like they if you came into like the Marriott USA and you were like, you know, like I want to, they'd be like, "Hi, amazing, welcome." You get a drink on arrival. They take you to the room. They tell you everything. They would show you around the hotel. They tell you every single facility they had. Then they'd be like, "Anything you need, you need me to book you into a restaurant. I'll book you for anything you need. Phone zero. I'll be at your service." You know, the the so like that. Um, and then you'd work in the Marriott in the UK, and they'd be like, "Give them nothing. Tell them nothing." Like, yeah, there's your card. See you there's later. your card. See you later. Exactly. And it was so like just different but then they had like they give you in america you you'd have to hit targets and it'd be like come on hit your target and like everyone would be like Woo, we've hit our target and then like in england we'd be like there's your target and then it'd be like everyone would be like well i'm not asked about hitting it like yeah like it's not cool to hit your targets in yeah england. while as in america it's like you've hit your target yeah yes, you're amazing let's you have a party. party yeah <laughs> let's have a party let's have drinks let's have food like They'd always reward you. Everything was like a reward system. Like, you've smashed it, you're going to get a reward. Then you come back to England, it's like, am I asked about hitting my target? And I was like, well, I'll leave you in the dust. Yeah. And then I'm the top seller forever, and everyone's like, ah, shit, you know, teachers, press, yeah. whatever. I'm like, so I don't care. So what? I'm hitting my targets. I'm making money. 
I want to give people good service. So every time in the UK, it would always be me getting like, oh, Catherine was amazing on reception, blah, blah, blah. No one else was getting that because they hadn't had that like American style of training so, that I'd had. Okay. And I I really got thrown in there because I, when I got there, I was shy. I'd worked in like bars and whatever, as you do. But I, being on reception and, and like wearing a suit and being like, hi, welcome to the Marriott. Like, I was so scared and they were like, literally threw me out the door. They're like, do it now, we'll stand by you. And like, stood by me and took me think... through, forced into it. And then, you know, a couple of weeks later and I, I'm selling the most, I'm doing the most, I'm making the most money. So I'm just like, okay, great. And then I had a taste for that life, that customer service, that style of managing people. And I thought that that is what I will always do now and I will always offer great customer service. So even though I, don't, I shouldn't say this, like when someone orders my wine online, any single issue, no matter what, I'll either refund them or send them a new bottle or, you know, there's... I was going to tell you, Stacey, I'm going to be like, yes, we're going to get to Catherine. And I know. That has a spider in it. I don't, I don't like saying it, but it, it, it's true. Like, I'm so obsessed. Do we want to know some mail? I want to talk in the morning. Like, no, Eric, let's message Catherine. Yeah, tell her it never arrives. Yeah, it never comes. We're on to you. I know, I know. Don't be doing it. But yeah, I'm just, I'm so keen on customer service. And then China... China was great again, and like actually, I was working for an American company in China. Oh, okay. But it was like they were Chinese nationals, but they the main owner was an American. Did they have that same customer service philosophy in in China? I mean, because I just can't see the two. No, I mean <laughs> they tried. Yeah, <laughs> but it wasn't quite working out the same. Um, they like the, obviously the owner really wanted that. Yeah. But when you hire Chinese staff. They're not necessarily the way Americans outgoing, are. Yeah. They're not so outgoing. They're not so like, yeah, I'll do anything. They're very, they're a lot more chilled yeah. and um, reserved, shall we say. But still very hard working. Oh, absolutely. And as you say, systems and procedures, God, you can't get a place absolutely. better. Absolutely. Everything's on an app even back then. And that's whatever, eight years ago now, 10 years ago. Um, so everything's on an app then. And all the systems are like completely... I did learn loads from them, but I don't think I learned like how I would run my business. As such. You suited better to the American system. I suited system. better to the American system, exactly. Yeah. So then, when I came back to the UK, I'm still not ready to start my own business, but I'm getting closer. Yeah. And I'm thinking, okay, well, whatever business I work for now, I'm going to absolutely smash it for them. I'm going to grow that, and that's exactly what I did. I went straight into this small business with just three of us, and we smashed it. And Amazing. you know, by the time I'd left, there was like twenty plus staff big massive office in speech wow and i just thought yeah my job is done now yeah <laughs> there's no way yeah. else i can take it yeah yeah it's over to me yeah so once you've grown you've started to grow your social media company how did lockdown affect your business so with social media side um it, it didn't it was good it was great yeah it was great because people were spending people more time spend, yeah, yeah they're spending more time online and the brands recognize that Brands were like, right, people are sat at home and they're spending more time online and also they're not being monitored. So online shopping or on social media, they're doing whatever. So we need to invest now in social media stuff. Yeah. So that side of the business didn't falter. The wine side, so what so happened? Well, let's go back a little I bit. Know, yeah. Let's, We've let's go it, back too far. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's go back, go back. So you've got Social Nation, you've got yeah. all these influencers and I would think that was hard enough because I've seen some of these influencers and they yeah. are hard graft. <laughs> they are, yeah. Um, yeah. So you've got this already. <laughs> yeah. So Where did the wine come from, Tom? Well, what happened was... Cause, you love wine. Well, I absolutely <laughs> love wine, yeah. yeah. So, because I was making all these brands loads of money, so bearing in mind, it's like clothing brands, makeup brands, fashion, hair extensions... So they're coming to me, they're paying me, let's just say, two grand to use an influencer. The influencer's going away, posting about them, and then they're getting 10 grand back in their bank. Wow. The, the return on investment from using influencers, particularly five years ago, before it was a saturated market, mm. was insane. Like, you've never seen anything like it. So I was thinking, well, if they can make that much money from using an influencer, I know how to use influencers. I've got influencers. I need my own brand and my own product. But what do I want to do? I knew I didn't want hair beauty. I'm not that kind of girl. I can't even do my own hair. Like, I, can't, I, I honestly can't. Um, so I'm like, I don't want to do anything like that. And also I wanted to have like real longevity. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, well, what do I love? 
I love wine. Yes. And that's literally how it came about because I was always going on wine holidays, wine tastings, like always like, oh, you know, can we get a bottle of wine? Loved wine. But particularly because of the influencer side, mm. I was always going basically to the opening of an envelope. Yeah. That was when I was younger. Now I, I hate going to an event. Mm. Getting dressed is like such a ball ache. But at, at the time I was like at every event, every yeah. launch party, every opening, every venue that opened, I was there. And it was always champagne on arrival or Prosecco on arrival. And I very quickly started gaining weight. And I've been in China, dead skinny, because you've barely eaten anything. Yeah. Like running around, mad busy, running, the city's so big, you can't get across it. Um, and then I've come home and like, I'm gradually gaining weight and I'm thinking, why am I doing this? And I was drinking so much sugar. Okay. When I actually looked at it, the sugar in the, in the um, Prosecco and the champagne, just like, God, no wonder I'm bloody fat now. So I'm like, okay, I want to make a change. And that's how the idea clicked. I was like, I wonder if there's low sugar wines. And so I'm like that Googling it, it's a low sugar wines, but asking everyone. I found one, one low sugar wine that at the time it was called Skinny Prosecco. It's changed its name now. I don't know what it's called now, but at the time years ago, it was called that. So I ordered, I feel a bit bad now saying this, but I ordered it. I'll be I, honest. I, I didn't like it yeah. at all. That's your choice. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I was just like, if this is the only competition that this industry has, then I can without doubt better it. Because I know there's got to be a way to create a wine with less sugar that's still nice. No. So literally just a thought. And you know, when I, you probably know, because being of the same mind, um, when you get something in your head, you can't stop it's or huge. sleep until you've it's done it. Huge. Exactly, yeah. Until You're lying in bed <laughs> at like four o'clock in the morning. What about this? What yeah. about that? Yeah. It's an obsession, isn't it? Yeah, it's exactly that. And I couldn't sleep at night until I'd done it because I'd, I'd had the idea and I thought, someone else is going to get this idea if I, don't move, if I don't move on it. And then, so anyway, I had quite a bit of money because by this point, I had a successful agency and... I didn't really act like I had an office. It was this big. I only had a couple of staff, you know, and I had profit. So I had a bit of money, but I thought surely to make your own wine is going to cost the bomb. I don't have that much money. Then I went to a boot camp. So, you know, like them residential boot camps where you go for like yeah. a week and they bath you. And you well, no, it. I wouldn't know because I'm a lazy bitch, but <laughs> I've seen them. them. I've seen yeah. them, yeah. So I went to one of them and... I have my own boot camp with me fucking kids. They bath my head. <laughs> yeah, that's enough. No, God, I'm, yeah, I'm grateful for no kids. Lucky bitch. <laughs> so I, um, I went to this boot camp and I ended up meeting this woman there. And this woman is the type of woman that I should probably never have come across in my life. Like, she's very, very posh. She's like Ghanaian. Her back, well, her dad's like really high up the ranks in Ghana. Um, she's Ghanaian background, but she's very posh. London banker, like investment banker as well okay. so I don't think in the in the real world our paths were the cross no. you know she's definitely the universe has put you in it put you there yeah exactly that and I thought okay this is weird however so we're, we're chatting away and you know we're saying like because we're both there to lose weight I, I lost like 10 pounds in a week and I was like whoa made up and she was there to lose weight as well so we're chatting away and I'm like I'm starving she's like me too but wouldn't you kill for a glass of wine I was like no I would kill for a glass of wine I was like, anyway, my idea, for, by the way, while you're here, is to create a low sugar wine. And she was like, oh my God, that's genius. She's like, why is that not done? I said, well, there is this one, it tastes the poo. And she goes, oh my God, yeah. She's like, I love champagne. Of course, she's champagne. I'm yeah. Prosecco. She's like, oh, I love champagne. I'm like, Tomato, I love tomato. Prosecco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same thing, whatever, bubbles. Yeah. Um, she's like, oh God, if we could create it, you know. And, uh, and she was like, I want to get on board. Like, can I, can I get on board with this? Can I back your idea? Anyway, she ended up loaning me some money. We've been, wow. honestly, best mates ever since. Wow. Uh, and we're just completely different. And she's 15 years older than me, um, even though she doesn't look it, which pisses me off as well. Because everyone always goes, oh, you two are always thinking we're the same age. And I'm like, we're not the same age. <laughs> no! Yeah, are you messing? Um, but yeah, she, so we, we shouldn't work, but we just do. And we've just got the same like mindset and everything. But she always says to me, you know, I never had that entrepreneurial spirit. I was always clever. Like, she's book smart. So yeah. she's, like, got a degree in law, you know, d really great at finance, been promoted high up the ranks for years, but it's proper corporate, like, 
by the book, like reads everything, knows everything, but never had like that risk yeah. attitude or yeah. like, while as I'm the exact opposite, like I'm like, oh yeah, opposite that, to that can stay, you know, I don't want to look at the figures. I just want to like run free, make yeah. sales, have fun yeah. and take risks. So we were opposite, but it worked out. I tell you, anyway. you know that saying, what's meant to be when pass you by. Yeah. Yeah. Bloody hell. It is. That's yeah. the best example of it, I think I've ever heard. Yeah. Well, yeah, I know. And looking back, it's weird because you go, oh my God, I can't believe that even happened. But yeah, we're still best mates to this day. And from that point, we started to develop it. So we went on trips together to Italy just to try out wineries. And what we were looking for was a wine that would taste, it tasted so nice with sugar that yeah. if you removed it, it'd still be nice. Yeah. So you're going to Italy? Yeah. <laughs> So that was a hard time in my life. I bet you know what? Drink wine in Italy with your bestie. <laughs> yeah, we were back and forth and we just, we went to so many wineries, so many different ones and we were just tasting their wine. Because the, the thing is with a Prosecco, especially rather than a Champagne, the Prosecco comes from a, a Glera grape. So you can very easily get like a crappy Glera grape, but you can hide it by putting a load of sugar in. Okay. And then it makes it palatable and it's fine to drink. And that's why people just go, oh, I'll have a bottle of Prosecco, whatever. I don't care what it is. Yeah. And it's just full of sugar. It's just full of sugar and it's poo, yeah. And it doesn't taste great. So, and it, but it's just easy, isn't it, for a group of girls? And yeah. it looks good on pictures and all that. But actually, I was trying to find like a really high quality grape so that even with the removal of sugar, it's still going to be amazing. So that, that was hard to find. But also trying to find it where... You were pissed, were you? Yeah, <laughs> oh God, absolutely, yeah. Days on end, drunk. But we kept going back like for different weekends. We went back wow. a, a fair few weekends we went because we, we were both still working full time. Yeah. And it was just very much a side project. But um, we ended up finding this winery and they're like family run. And because I kept saying to them, like, I want to make it vegan because all my clients were going vegan. And I was like, I want to make it vegan because all my clients are going vegan, so I want them to be able to drink it. Mm. Um, and you go to the wine and be like, oh, no, we don't do vegan. Like, no, that's too much of a process or whatever. Because the way it's vegan, everyone asks me this. Well, how's a wine vegan? Because it's only made from grapes. Yeah, how's it not vegan? I was just thinking that, yeah. Yeah. that was my next question. Yeah. I, was thinking, I don't get this. I don't get it, because there's no meat in it. But it's the way it's clarified. So when a wine's made, it's, it's cloudy. And then it gets clarified, and it can be through, like, egg whites. It can be through fish scales. It can be through guts. So that's what makes it not vegan, the way it's okay. clarified, not the grapes itself. So ours is clarified through peas, and yeah. that's what makes it vegan. So it's no different. You know, the wine's the exact same, but it's just how, it, how you remove it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, when I was speaking to wineries, they're like, oh, we don't want to touch that. We don't want to do vegan. I get to this family room one, and I told him, you know, all about the vision, and he proper got it. Like, he was like, yeah, I get this. Like, he's like, yeah, yeah. And then I was saying, I want it vegan. He, oh, he's like, everything we do here is vegan. I want it organic. Wow. Everything we do here is organic. Um, I was like, and I need to, I said, I know you make your own wine. I said, but I love that wine. That's what I'm tasting. I love it. But I need it with less sugar. I need you to make it for me with less sugar. He's like, no problem at all. So obviously he goes to the winemaker. Is it possible? Can we do this? He's like, yeah. So that's how we got started when I found the winery that I loved. And I was like, okay, let's do it. So initially you just have to buy like a tank of each. So I've got this. This is a Pinot Grigio sparkling rosé. So it's like a bit like a pink Prosecco, but it's a Pinot Grigio. Oh, do you know what? We haven't sparkling. even got no glasses, so let's have a little cup. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, don't worry. Oh, do you know what? We'll have, should we get a cup? Oh, we, should, <laughs> we try again? I should have had it in the fridge. But we've only got cups. <laughs> oh, who gives That's a okay, shit? That's okay, yeah. God, yeah. you do the honours. Do it, your thing. So yeah, I haven't tasted it before, Gail, so I am going to give you my full, honest opinion. Thank you, Caitlin. Oh, God. Woo! <laughs> 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 oh, party! <laughs> Let's do the American. Yeah. You just hit I a know, target. Right? Woo! Oh, shit, Ooh. sorry. I'm not that good of a pourer. <laughs> okay, she's just the drinker. Yeah. That's right. Literally. Right, you ready, Gail? Right, I'll have to do a cheers with me, Gail. Okay, right there. Cheers! Cheers! <laughs> cheers! Oh, well, I can taste it's this bubble gorgeous. right now. Oh, I'm so happy you like it. Good. It's lovely. Mm. Mm. I love it. The pink's my favourite. So the other one we've got is a Prosecco, an actual Prosecco. This is a Pinot Grigio Sparkling Rosé. And we got this because at the time, pink Prosecco was illegal in Italy. Why? Because to call it... Chop me up, Charles. Chop me up. Drink it all. 
Um, oh, it's a lovely girl. And I, I don't like wine. Um, I do no. like Prosecco. And it's a bit warm as well, so sorry. It's warm and it's in a cup. Yeah. Fair coat. No knickers. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a lovely. Oh, good. I'm glad you like it. And to be honest, like, my boyfriend, he will not touch wine or Prosecco or anything. He's like, oh. But he's like, I can drink that. He's not, don't get me wrong, it's not his favourite. Yeah. Honestly. But he's like, I can really drink it. It's all right to drink. It's lovely. So why yeah. was pink, what, pink Prosecco illegal? So in in Italy, <laughs> to call Prosecco Prosecco, there's all types of rules. It's got to come from a certain region, a certain grape, whatever, whatever. So the Glera grape is not a pink grape. So mm. you can't, you couldn't, anyway, all types of reason you couldn't call it. However, they've now made it legal because the amount of money Italy can make by being able to create a pink Prosecco is massive. So they were like, we're stopping our country making money by not letting anyone call pink Prosecco, pink Prosecco. So they were like, okay, fine. So it's not illegal now, but I'd already started my Pinot Grigio Sparkling Rosé, which in my head is just a pink Prosecco. Yeah. And I'd already started that. And I thought, you know what? I'm not moving to pink Prosecco because I love this. Yeah. And it's my favourite. And all the feedback we get online is like, that pink we call it think pink. That think pink is unreal. It's gorgeous, and everyone loves the pink. Most, it's a I think. lovely cat. Oh, good. I'm Absolutely glad like lovely. Thank no you. compromise on taste. It's not bitter because I hate anything bitter. That's me, a I, I am a proper sweet tooth girl. Yeah. Like I could eat spoonfuls so of sugar. Yeah. yeah. Uh. And hate wine. Absolutely hate any wine because it's too bitter for me. Yeah. And that. And, but I do like Prosecco yeah. because of the sugar. Yeah, because it's But full. that is absolutely lovely. And I'm not Aww. just bullshitting you because I'm not a bullshitter. I'd yeah, say, yeah. No, oh, crap, it's not for me. I can tell. It, <laughs> it's absolutely gorgeous. Aww. So con massive congratulations. Thank you. Thanks so how so long much. before all of this pandemic did you start this? Only just before. No oh, fuck. Honestly, yeah, it was bad timing. Um, it's not bad timing. I, I owned a Every friggin' hotel just before fucking lockdown. Oh also, it's like we've been talking off camera as well, and Catherine's another one of my soul sisters. It's just like, <laughs> oh, me too. <laughs> and we've had the middle. Yeah. Yeah. So we are sisters. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I know exactly how you feel because I've done a hotel. Hospitality, everything was just... Was just yeah. Okay, yeah. talk about a fucking smack in the face. Mm. Yeah, and that's because I think the vision for me, even though obviously I always wanted to sell online and stuff, the vision was to see it in, you know, like my favourite bars and my favourite restaurants yeah. and big event spaces and then all of a sudden that was just taken away. Especially with the industry that you're in, mm. where you're in like going to the going events to and events, everything, so that's yeah. where your head's at. Yeah, and that's what I was thinking, I was like, oh God, this will be so exciting. And then that happened, so we'd launched it late September and then obviously the pandemic was March. Huh wasn't it so yeah. I think by February no one was buying in the venues so we just started getting into venues by in like December for Christmas and then by Feb they were pulling us <gasps> saying like okay no um but but the saving grace is our online sales went through the roof wow because I, I say that just send everyone, got it fail, everyone got pissed <laughs> uh, exactly literally that first lockdown was phenomenal that wow first one um, I sent the wine. Did you have to change like your marketing and everything? Oh yeah, because of that. Yeah, yeah. And what everything did you do? changed. So, so you've got this business plan, and you, you know you are going yeah. in venues. How quick did you change? Literally overnight. And that I, that is being an entrepreneur as well. Yeah. It's being able to change direction at the drop of a hat and going right. Okay, I'm doing it this way. That's yeah. where our skill sets lie. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So what Not did you do? Panicking. Um. I just, there was a moment, don't get me wrong, where I panicked and I thought, oh God, what am I going to do? Because I've just hired a member of staff for this, for yeah. this. Because I already had staff in Social Nation, that was running itself, whatever. Yeah. But I'd just hired staff for this and it was making no money. So Scary, I, 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 I'm it, like, Kat? oh, what am I going to do? And then I just thought to myself, you know what? I've got a website already, like it's built because straight away we've built a website. Yeah. I said, I'm going to pummel all my money that was going to go into like this. Because when you go into like a, a new bar or something, you'll always say to them like, oh, I'll, I'll give you a brand. Yeah, yeah, point to sale. Exactly. Yeah. I'll give you all this branded gear. Yeah. I'll give you, you know, uh, you want to, what are they called? Like the umbrellas. Yeah. I'll give you brands of umbrellas. I'll give you this, that and the other. So all the money I had aside for that, I was like, absolutely not. All goes into Facebook ads, all goes into influencers, all goes into online. And that's all we did. We just flipped it overnight to everything e-commerce. Do you have to pay your influencers? Well, depends who. <laughs> Some of them owe me favours. So like when it's been my birthday, for example, yeah. they go to me, oh, what do you want for your birthday? I go, not in a post. So then I get a post for that. Ah. But then like if, obviously... Oh, minge bags. They are. <laughs> 
some, ah! sometimes they want to charge yeah, yeah so i do don't get me wrong i don't always get freebies yeah. I, I do have to pay sometimes but i do usually get a discount which is good but i said because obviously they're all in lockdown they're all dying of boredom i'm yeah. like oh great i'll help you get drunk take all the wine Sent them loads of wine. Exactly, yeah. Don't worry, you yeah. such a weird time for you. Another little universal blessing. I know, I know. I was, I was really grateful because the online sales weren't going massively well. Like, our, we weren't putting loads of effort into it. Yeah. We were putting so much effort into getting into venues and bars and restaurants. And that's why it was so heartbreaking when they were going, oh, uh, we can't order again because we're, we're probably going to close any minute. Um, and you so, can't blame them? No, absolutely not, no. And, like, some of them... We're just like, can we send the stock back? Because they'd only bought it in like the beginning of Feb. And they were like, by the end of Feb, they were closing. So they were like, can we send the stock back to you? And I was just like, yeah, whatever. Like, Aww. you know, you got to do what you got to do. At least I'd rather have the stock than just not get the money. Yeah, absolutely. So I was just like, yeah, okay. Are you grateful it's for it when the fucking online well, sales exactly, all started yeah, flying yeah. out? I was grateful ring for them, it. Ring them, please. Can I have that back? <laughs> At 3 p.m., I was literally like this. Oh, can I have it for myself? But no, we, we what we ended up doing, me and my sister, because my sister still lived at home with my mum. I lived on my own. And I've just recently broken up with someone. So I lived alone. So me and my sister basically just moved in together into mine. Wow. And we just worked the whole time through lockdown. But like now, for example, obviously I've got staff and all that. And we've got the office. And I don't pack a single bottle of wine that goes out the door. Yeah. But for that whole of lockdown, it was me packing it. Yeah. And I was literally writing like handmade notes. like You just get back in. to your roots and yeah, get stuck yeah, in, yeah. don't you? Yeah, and, I, and that, that's what I did. I packed all the wine. I, it was in, it was like that up high, stocked all throughout my house. Wow. And then the... Good job, you uh, said, never fucking felonies a flip zone. No, What's I know, going on? Yeah, I know. I was made up. I was like, yeah, I've got can do all this yeah. you know, freely. And then I'd, like the DHL fellow would still pick up from you because they wouldn't go to like office addresses or whatever now because they were closed. And so they'd come to my house and pick up the wine and, oh. and take it away. So my house was full of wine and me and my sister were just glued to the hip for the whole time. But that, I think that's what kept us sane. Because yeah. we're Being just busy. Not, yeah, we're, we need we're to be busy. Army. We need to do it, yeah. So we couldn't just like sit in. So we'd get up, go to the gym in the morning together and then we'd go and just pack wine all day and then drink wine all night. Yes. So that, that was, win, that win, was the story. <laughs> God. Yeah. So we, we got loads of sales during lockdown because we obviously flipped our plans. And then um, it's just, to be honest, it's only the past few months that we've got back into going the other way. You know, yeah. more venues, more event spaces, more hospitality venues. Do you feel like you've connected better with your brand by doing that, Deb? Yeah, yeah, so much better. And you know what I did as well? I just started, are you, are you on LinkedIn? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how to freaking use it. No, you've got to, you know, it's great. Everyone has said you've this about me. Well, I did, I was having a conversation with Andy Grant and he was telling me that they're setting up a, um, a thing to manage your LinkedIn for you because mm. it's that much of a fantastic tool. It's so And great. I have got no idea. Yeah. Everyone says it to me because you literally connect with any CEO you want yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know how to fucking great. use it. But you, you post and like... So before lockdown, I'd never been on LinkedIn. Yeah. And everyone was saying to me, get on get on LinkedIn, get on LinkedIn. So I thought, I've got no excuse. I'm in lockdown. I've got nothing to do. And you're a social media expert. Yeah, and I'm a social media. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I was only making money on like Instagram and... Yeah, we overlook all that, of that one, don't you, we? You just forget about LinkedIn as a business platform. But it's got loads of wine drinkers on it. It's got loads of business women. They all drink wine. So everyone was saying to me, you've got to get on LinkedIn. You need to post on LinkedIn. You need to introduce yourself on LinkedIn. So because of lockdown is the only reason I ever did it. I probably would never, and it's the best thing I've ever done. Why, Kat? Oh, so many sales. So many business-to-business -business sales, so like at Christmas. Because I'll post on LinkedIn, I'm like, hi, guys, um, I've got this happening today. This is what's going on. These are our plans, blah, blah, blah. And then people will message me and be like, hello, can I order 10 Christmas parcels for our office? Or Aww. can I order... Five, like when it's Valentine's Day, they're like, can I order five things for my girlfriend? Like little sets, because we create little sets, we create hampers, all of that. And when it's Valentine's Day, we do loads with the pink. So like, they'll just message me directly and be like, can I have 10 hampers or can I have 20 hampers? Wow. Or officers will go, oh, we're doing our office Christmas party. Can you send us 30 little bottles so we can all have a bottle each to start? And it's just like been phenomenal. And then not only that, it's the support that you get. So I'm not like, I obviously have worked with influencers for years. I've never once been like an influencer. That's yeah. just not me. I'm not like that. Um, but now it's like I'm becoming one on LinkedIn, if you know yes, what I mean. Because like I'm chatting to me. I'm thinking like I'm chatting to my screen. I've oh, never done that in my life. But now I'm doing it because yeah. people message you and go, hello, can I buy? 
And I'm like, well, this works. Absolutely. And you're selling yourself. Your brand is you. Yeah. Effectively. Yeah, people yeah. are buying into you as well. Yeah. And they're the thinking. Yeah, think I, one. Yeah, they're thinking think, think. think. Yeah. Well, that's another thing, by the way. And don't don't take it up with me now, because obviously I'm having a, a bad run on, on eating and drinking. But it, don't it's put actually, yourself down. it's thin. K thin. for Catherine. Oh, So, my God. like, as well as think about what you're drinking, think about what you're doing. It does incorporate me, because this was made for me. And I always said... If I never sell a single bottle, I'll drink it all myself. Ah, so it's thin, okay? Yeah. Woo! Yeah, Little the, message the, the behind plan is it. to get thin quick. What's been the biggest <laughs> thing you've had to overcome with Think Wine? Um, God, there's been that many things. Do you know what it is? The biggest thing was the alcohol license. Oh. So getting like a, an alcohol, like, like a personal license is not a bother. Most people in bars have them. You probably know that. Um, but getting a wholesale alcohol license, you need like three or four hour interview with HMRC. Wow. Yeah, and like they literally they want to know your whole life. What's your that? Background, you what's it, literally everything. They they go into depth, and you can see why. Obviously, because if you're just giving out alcohol to the whole world, they want to know you're a responsible human being. They wouldn't fucking give me one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> None for you. <laughs> no, no, no. But yeah, like. So that was really hard, and I struggled with that because I was like, "This is just mad that because it, it, you feel like you're a criminal, even though you know you're not." I always feel like that sometimes though, when you, you yeah. like you, you think you've done something wrong. Yeah, you yeah. Haven't I yeah. get that? And you just feel, you're thinking like, "Oh God, w- would I get this?" But then you're like, "Well, why would I?" Wouldn't because I? Cause obviously I am like fine. Yeah. And there's been no issues since, but that was really hard. And then actually, I had another run in with HMRC because you know with Brexit, there was a load of changes that were made like to how you can import your stock so my supplier didn't like there was a piece of paper that he missed on the new run Mm. and so when my stock hit England HMRC seized it (gasps) and I was like nearly gonna die I was like oh my god I'm, I'm sick I don't know what to do because all because of one missing bit of paper to be fair to them like they dealt with me like really fairly like they were like look you know we can't because they have the power they could have literally binned all that (gasps) I mean that would be so stupid when the the, the world's like up shit creek to yeah. do that. Mm. But they could have. Yeah. They have that power. They could have just gone, okay, thanks, bye, get in the bin. Yeah. But they never, they were like, we'll help oh, you get it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So they did help me through, but I was sobbing. And it was funny because I had an interview for a girl to come and work for me. And I just got the phone call to say like, oh, we've seized your sock. I burst out crying, sobbing in the scales at my door, looking at me and I'm thinking, I was like, I'm not a crier, because I'm not, I'm no. gen- generally, I'm not a crier, yeah. not that there's anything wrong with that, but that's just not you. I just don't cry much, so the fact that I burst out crying and the girls walked in the room, I'm like, well, this is weird, because I'm sobbing in your face when I'm meant to be interviewing you, and I just have to tell her the truth and yeah. just say, look, HMRC sees me sucks, so I'm sobbing because of that. Yeah. And she was just like, oh, it's okay. She was like, I'm a crier too. I'm thinking, I'm not oh, a crier. Yeah. You're not getting I the don't job cry. now. <laughs> <laughs> she did actually get the job. I'm tiny tears. Yeah, I know. She got the job and I love it a bit. Uh, but it's, it's, it's funny because we laugh about it because I go, can you imagine me now like that? And she's like, yeah, no, I can't. Because totally it's character. not like you to, to do that. But um, no, it was just, it killed me because it was, well, to be fair, we have to pay them 40 grand. <gasps> yeah. So it was a big thing and it was, Really, just a struggle. Oh, them but, tears were absolutely well deserved. Oh, yeah, Forty yeah. grand later. I know. Yeah, I was sobbing. But that was there. The two, both HMLC, <laughs> the two biggest things that have. Uh, What's next for Think Wine? America. Is it? Yeah. Can I come? So we, yeah, of course. Hell yeah, now. Um, I was just checking you out to see <laughs> if we could bring you. <laughs> um, yeah. So I've already launched there in four wow. states. How? So we've got California, New York, New Jersey, and Florida. I feel like it's a problem. Oh. Oh. That's what I feel like when it landed because it took oh. forever. Because again, it was all like import documents and all that, getting set up for the distributor. And there's so many in America. There's so many. Like there's three different tiers, and every alcohol, every state has a different like alcohol rule. Oh. So it's it's a pain. It's like setting up in a new country. Yeah. Each day. So anyway. We only just landed the stock in December, so not much has happened yet. But I'm on like that's that's my goal. So I'm gonna fly out there probably April, and I'm gonna do a couple of months there, just like selling. Amazing. Things. Yeah, and we've got we've already got a few people on board, but there's way more to come. Way more. Amazing girls as well. Catherine has 
done a masterclass over on Sisterhood HQ's Yay. website. So when you subscribe, <laughs> as you can see, like. Catherine has just got so much knowledge and she's the most gorgeous person you've ever met in your whole entire life. So you can, <laughs> she's absolutely fabulous. You can go on and you can learn from Catherine on one of our masterclasses when you subscribe to Sisterhood HQ. And girls, the next time you are reaching for a bottle of wine, it better be think. It better. It's absolutely think. gorgeous. It's made in, it's made by a liver puddling girl. She's an absolute <laughs> queen entrepreneur. So support local business. The next time you're buying any wine or you're buying anything as a gift, make sure it's think wine. Catherine, thank you. Thank so you so much for joining us. Thanks for us. having me.